goodness. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is for you. My name is Zach Schaumler. This is Strong Opinion Sports. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Today is Tuesday, April 10th. I apologize. I got really sick this weekend. I, I took Monday off, but I will still do three podcasts this week. I'm preparing to do another one late Wednesday night and then Friday. Nonetheless, I'm, a, I'm about ready to jump through a brick wall. I am so fired up today. I'm actually... I don't know. I want to get right into it. I want to start with this. I got extremely ticked off this weekend. I saw a girl who recently graduated from my college. She's a very, very low-level sportscaster. She put on her Instagram story, she said this. She said, failing was worse than never trying. She said, failing was worse than never trying. I, I, I couldn't control it. I literally got... I didn't make it public. I didn't say anything to her, but I got extremely angry. Here's the thing. We fail every single day. It's an everyday part of life. You cannot live in fear of failure. You just can't. It happens every day. I'm not saying spend all your money in Vegas. I'm not saying that. Don't be reckless. But but I had a buddy who was offered a job in San Francisco, and he turned it down because he was afraid of leaving his family. (sighs) Again, don't be reckless, but you cannot be afraid of taking a chance. We've seen this over and over and over again in the world of sports. Look at last year's college football playoff. The Oklahoma Sooners had fourth and one. They had the best quarterback in all of college football. They had Baker Mayville, who just won the Heisman. Fourth and one in the Oklahoma Sooners. Sooners chose to not go for it on fourth and one, and they lost. They were not willing to take a risk, and they lost because of it. Now, Alabama, in the national championship game, Alabama benched Jalen Hurts, the quarterback who started all year for Alabama, and put in a freshman quarterback at halftime who carried them to the national championship. See, someone asked me for relationship advice this weekend. They really, really like one of their good, good friends. They like their best friend and their best friend rejected them. And they said, oh, this is awful. I wish I just never, ever told them how I felt. And I said this, I said, it would be harder to see them with another person if you'd never spoke up. See, it's one thing to, to see them with someone else and, and you, at least you tried and you took your shot and you failed. It's a whole nother thing to sit there wondering, what if I just took my shot? Oh man, oh man. So I say to you with conviction, When I say that I believe the Rams are doing the right thing. The Rams have made so many off-season moves. They're traded for Marcus Peters. They traded for Aqib Tlaib. They traded for Brandon Cooks. They they signed Ndamukong Sue. And I believe, I strongly believe, if you have a shot at a Super Bowl, you need to go for it. You must go for it. You cannot be afraid of coming up short. And, And luckily... Thank my stars. It appears the Rams general manager, Les Snead, agrees with me. Les Snead told Peter King this. He said, I got one simple rule. You can't be scared in this league. So when that girl posted on Instagram, it fired me up. Got me angry because you are going to get rejected. You're going to fail. You're going to lose. It's part of life. Accept it and move on. Please, for the love of God, do not let your fear of failure stopping you, stop you from doing what you want. Do not let your fear of failure cripple you. We're all scared. You're scared. I'm scared. In 2016, the Rams had the number one overall pick. And the Eagles traded up to the number two overall pick and drafted Carson Wentz. Two years later, look at where both of those teams are. The Eagles took chances first. The Eagles traded up for a quarterback. They made a ton of risky acquisitions last year, and the Eagles just won a Super Bowl. Now, it looks like the Rams may follow suit. The Rams have begun to take risk after risk after risk. It looks like the Rams are on their way to a Super Bowl, but even if the Rams fail, even if the Rams come up short, there are two teams in Los Angeles, and the Rams are now LA's team. The Rams have won over Los Angeles. I I love what the Rams are doing. Please, for the love of God, do not be afraid of failure. You're going to fail. Accept it. 
move on. Do not let your fear of failure stop you from pursuing the things you want. I love what the Rams are doing. All right. We have a great show today. I'm going to finally give the people what they want. You guys have been begging and begging. We want a mock draft. We want a mock draft. I, I hate mock drafts. But I, I'm going to give you guys what you want. I have not one. I have two mock drafts ready to go this podcast. I'm going to also discuss Johnny Manziel. What I saw from Johnny Manziel in the spring league. I'm going to share kind of my thoughts. Is he or is he not an NFL quarterback? We're going to talk about Case Keenum. We're going to talk about Shuhei Otani. We're going to talk just a very little bit about the NBA playoffs, and then there's a lot more football coming up ahead. My name is Zach Schaumler. You can subscribe to Strong Opinion Sports on iTunes, on SoundCloud, and on YouTube. You can find the full entire hour-long podcast on YouTube as well as my best, most interesting clips. If you like Strong Opinion Sports as much as I do, help me grow this podcast by telling your friends about this show. Share it on Facebook, on Twitter, or on Instagram. If you understand Reddit, I have no idea. I don't understand Reddit at all. If you like strong opinion sports, help me grow by telling your friends about this show. That rhymes. That's a crime. I feel bad about it. I'm, I'm working on something, by the way. I know that I get comments all the time. You know, the background is gray. It's, it's not going anywhere. I, I'm, I move out in three weeks, and then you'll see a white background. It's just, it, you know, I, I'm a college kid. However, there is something I'm working on, and that is looking at you guys through the camera. I know I tend to look all around the room. People often ask, "Who is there anybody in the room with you? No, it's just me by myself. It's just, it's weird to talk for like an hour directly at a camera. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to talk to you guys directly as much as I possibly can. Okay. Uh, I, I absolutely hate mock drafts. I'm not a fan of them. I, I've ignored all the comments asking for mock drafts up to this point. And, and here's what I hate. We see all these mock drafts with ridiculous, crazy headlines. Like the Cowboys trade 100 draft picks to go get Sam Darnold. Or the Patriots draft Baker Mayfield. Uh, no. Please... No, go away. Stop. I know what you're doing. It's clickbait. Because I think many mock drafts miss the point. What is the purpose of a mock draft? I believe what a mock draft should be is journalists use insider knowledge to predict what will happen. There are some people out there who talk to NFL scouts. They talk to NFL general managers. They know more than I do. I want to hear what they have to say. But then we see bloggers, and and frankly, people like me, people who have no access to NFL teams, and we see these people create all these crazy, unrealistic predictions and then pretend like they're realistic and pretend like they're actual things that could happen. In reality, they're just crazy headlines. Their purpose is to get clicks on a website, and I don't want to do that. I I don't, I just, I feel uncomfortable. If I'm going to do that, at least I'm going to be honest about it. I want to be honest with you guys. If I'm going to put out crazy headlines, I'm going to tell you I'm doing it so I get clicks. I'm not going to, I just, it feels weird. It feels wrong. It feels fake. I read all these headlines and it's just like, you have to, you have no idea what you're talking about. And you pretend like you do and you're not an insider. You're some blogger in South Carolina who's never met an NFL general manager or a scout or anything. So I, I have no idea what is going to happen on Thursday, April 26th, the day of the NFL draft. I have no idea. I provide commentary. I'm not an insider. I don't have any NFL connections. I'll be, I'm honest. Like, I'm straight up. I have no NFL gems on my phone. I don't know any scouts. I know about, I know probably a little more than you do because I do all my research and my homework, but I don't know much more than you. However, you guys keep asking. You guys keep saying, Zach, we want a mock draft. So you know what? Screw it. I'm going to give you guys what you want. Uh, but, but I want to be very honest because I, I know, I, I just, I don't want to be that guy who's pretending to be something I'm not. I, I'm not an insider. It's not who I am. I do the best I can. I just provide commentary. Now, there's one thing I really, really want to happen. Uh, there, there, there's, there's two mock drafts I'm going to do. One of them is kind of my, my dream mock draft. It's what I, it, it, it's the storylines I want to happen from the NFL draft. And I'm going to do a second one that I think is a little bit more realistic. These are just talking points. I'm not trying to be accurate. My goal with this show and with these mock drafts is to be interesting. And even look, if I somehow got the entire NFL draft correct, I'm not going to rub it in your face. I don't know that much. I, I, I'm just, these are shots in the dark. There, there are maybe educated guesses given headlines, but we really don't know. It's just for fun. This is purely for fun to try to be entertaining and try to be interesting. Uh, and let's be honest. The reason I'm making this is because I want people to watch my videos. I want people to watch my mock drafts. I think people genuinely want to see what I have to say. So I'm going to do it. There you go. All right. Okay. 
And now that I've completely deflated all excitement for my mock draft, I want to get started. This is this is my my mock draft full of picks that I want to happen. This is what if I could script a, a, an NFL draft. If I could say this is exactly what I want to happen, this is what would happen. This is what I'm rooting for as a football fan. The first overall pick in the NFL draft on Thursday, April 26th, I sincerely hope the New England Patriots trade up anything and everything it takes to go and draft Sam Darnold. I really, really want to see the Patriots draft Sam Darnold. I don't care if it takes two first rounds, two second rounds, maybe some fourth, whatever it takes. I want to see the New England Patriots draft Sam Darnold number one overall. I think it's possible. I think they have the the resources and the chess pieces to make it happen. And I would love to see that. I love Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold is my favorite quarterback in this year's NFL draft. I met him once. I want Sam Darnold to succeed. I think the best way for that to happen is to send Sam Darnold to New England. Let him sit behind Tom Brady for two, one, two, three years. And it's funny, I keep telling myself that I believe in Tom Brady. Well, Tom Brady's 40 years old. He lost his left tackle. Tom Brady lost his right tackle. He lost his two favorite receivers. He lost Brandon Cooks and what is Danny Amendola. He lost his running back. What it feels like to me is that the Patriots have stopped trying to win with Tom Brady. It's like they've moved on. They're trying. They have a different goal now. And I'll be honest, I'm more of a Bill Belichick fan than I am a Tom Brady fan. I really want to see Tom Brady succeed without Bill. I want to see Bill Belichick succeed without Tom Brady. I think Tom Brady is going to retire very soon. And I want to see Bill Belichick continue that success. I want to see Bill Belichick win a Super Bowl without Tom Brady. I was crushed when the Patriots traded away Jimmy Garoppolo. I I know I have a big fan base that's 49ers fans. I was sad. I wanted to see Bill Belichick win a Super Bowl with Garoppolo. We'll never see that now. But maybe we can see Bill Belichick win a Super Bowl with Sam Darnold. That sounds fun. That sounds interesting. So with the second overall pick... I want and I believe the Bills are going to trade up for Baker Mayfield. Why Baker Mayfield? Why not Josh Rosen? I believe Baker Mayfield is the second coming of Doug Flutie. I could see that happening. I think that'd just be fun to cover. If if Baker Mayfield went to the Buffalo Bills and was just like Doug Flutie, running around, making stuff happen, making plays happen, that sounds fun to me. Now, the question is, why would the Giants trade out of the number two overall pick? Why would the Giants give up on Josh Rosen? And why, why would the—it's it, interesting. There's a report that the Giants only like Sam Darnold rather than Josh Rosen. Now, I think this could be manipulation. I don't 100% buy this story. I think that it's possible the Giants are just manipulating the Browns into not picking Josh Rosen so that the Giants can pick Josh Rosen with a number two overall pick. However, for this crazy fantasy land of mine that I've created that is this mock draft, I'm going to believe it. I'm going to say, oh, hey, maybe— Maybe the Giants do indeed actually not like Josh Rosen. Maybe they trade out of the number two overall pick. So in my crazy fantasy land, I want the Buffalo Bills to get Baker Mayfield. That sounds fun. It would give me a reason to finally watch the Buffalo Bills. I'm honestly more interested in watching Baker Mayfield early on than I am Josh Rosen. I think with a third overall pick, the Jets would come in. They'd swoop in. They would draft Josh Rosen. I think it's really Josh Rosen or Josh Allen. I I think the thing is that Josh Rosen is ready to play now. And the Jets need someone who's ready to play now. I feel bad for my friends who are Jets fans and their team is awful and they've been awful for years. Now, the Browns are interesting. I think the Browns still would have the fourth overall pick in this scenario. I think the Browns would go ahead and draft Josh Allen, the quarterback from Wyoming. If the Browns do not get Josh, sorry, Sam Darnold, if the Browns do not get Sam Darnold, I want the Browns to then draft Josh Allen. Here's why. I like Josh Allen. I think his big frame, his arm strength, that works in the windy, snowy, horrible climate that is Cleveland. Another benefit to Cleveland for Josh Allen is that Cleveland has a quarterback already. They already have Tyrod Taylor. The Browns honestly could afford to not let Josh Allen take a single snap next season. They could let Josh Allen sit, wait, and learn. And I like that idea. I do not believe that Josh Allen is ready to go immediately day one next year. Now, with the fifth overall pick in this scenario, I want the Broncos 
to draft the defensive end Bradley Chubb. The top four quarterbacks are gone. They're not going to get Allen or Mayfield or Rosen or Darnold. And the Broncos would have Case Keenum. The Broncos do have Case Keenum, and that's okay. Case Keenum's not amazing, but here's the thing. Here's why the Broncos would choose Bradley Chubb over Saquon Barkley. See, I believe that Case Keenum is an average quarterback at best. And the way you make up for having an average quarterback is that you have an incredible defense. Let's be honest. If the Broncos only gave up 10 points, if they averaged only giving up 10 points all year, they could take Case Keenum a long, long way. If Case Keenum, if the pressure is completely off Case Keenum because the Broncos' defense is just annihilating people, Case Keenum can rest easy. He can just do his job. He's not going to have a bunch of turnovers. He's not going to make big mistakes. If you can have the defense take care of things and then let Case Keenum do work, we could see a team like the, the Ray Lewis... Ravens that took Trent Dilfer to a Super Bowl. I think that actually could happen. If you can keep your defense good enough. Because remember, don't forget, the Broncos have incredible defensive personnel. I think Bradley Chubb would mix in very, very well with the Broncos. Now the Colts, here's what I want the Indianapolis Colts to do. The Colts have the sixth overall pick. I want the Indianapolis Colts to draft the interior guard, Quinton Nelson from Notre Dame. I know that's a boring pick. Everyone would rather the Colts draft Saquon Barkley. Here's the thing. The Colts' offensive line is awful. It is terrible. It's the worst. Andrew Luck isn't throwing still. Still, Andrew Luck is not throwing a football. It's possible the Colts completely ruined Andrew Luck's career because they did not get him an offensive line. Well, now is your chance. If you're ever going to get... Andrew Luck and offensive line, do it now. Start by drafting Quentin Nelson. And let's be honest, why would the Colts draft Saquon Barkley when they don't have an offensive line in place? What use is a running back without an offensive line? There's not much. There really isn't. You know why Ezekiel Elliott is dominating with the Cowboys? Ezekiel Elliott's a good running back. But do not forget that his offensive line is unbelievable. So I want the Colts to be disciplined, and I want the Colts to draft their biggest need, which is offensive line. I want the Colts to draft Quinton Nelson from Notre Dame. Now, with the seventh overall pick, I am I, I want the Buccaneers to draft Minka Fitzpatrick. Now, this is the most unrealistic pick on this entire mock draft. Because I think, honestly, if the Buccaneers had a chance to draft Saquon Barkley with the seventh overall pick, they would 100% take it. But I would rather see Matt Nagy, Mitch Trubisky, and the Chicago Bears have a weapon like Saquon Barkley. I like what the Bears are doing. So I want the Bears to pick Saquon Barkley with the 8th overall pick. I want the Buccaneers to pick Minka Fitzpatrick with the 7th overall pick. Again, I think, I think both Minka Fitzpatrick and Saquon Barkley are both stars in the NFL. I just want to see Saquon and Trubisky match up. I want to see them together. I would rather see Saquon and Trubisky than Saquon and Jameis Winston. Now, this is where it gets interesting because this mock draft is all about wishful thinking. This is not realistic. This is what I want to happen. That leads me to the San Francisco 49ers. See, I believe the responsible thing for the 49ers to do in this NFL draft is to draft defense. They're probably going to draft Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker from, I believe, Virginia Tech. I should know that better. But here's the thing. I really want... Is that my new catchphrase? Here's the thing. I've been saying that a lot. I want the San Francisco 49ers to draft Calvin Ridley, the wide receiver from Alabama. It's very selfish of me. I'm going to watch every single snap that Jimmy Garoppolo plays for the next couple of years. I'm invested in Jimmy Garoppolo. So I want to see Jimmy Garoppolo have a premier receiver. That sounds like a lot of fun. This is a weak wide receiver draft, and Calvin Ridley is the only receiver in the top f- couple rounds that I would draft early on. And here's, I gotta stop saying that. When I think of Alabama wide receivers, I think of Julio Jones. That's a guy, I, he's a guy I would draft early in the draft. Julio Jones is not just a special athlete. Julio Jones has a special Pro level work ethic. He's legendary for Julio Jones has a legendary work ethic. 
Now, I don't know anything about Calvin Ridley off the field. I don't know if he has a great work ethic. But I do know that Calvin Ridley chose to go to Alabama. In 2015, when I graduated high school, Calvin Ridley was in my recruiting class. Calvin Ridley was the number one wide receiver in the nation. He could go wherever he wanted. And yet, Calvin Ridley, he did not choose USC. He did not choose Florida State. He didn't choose to go party at Arizona State. Calvin Ridley chose to go to Alabama, which I think was a very business-like decision. You all, everybody knows what they're getting into when they go to Alabama. Alabama is going to beat the snot out of you for your entire time there. That is a guy who clearly has a good work ethic. He wants to be challenged, and he, I believe, has an NFL-ready work ethic simply because he chose to go to Alabama rather than every other school he had the option to attend. I sincerely, truly hope, because I want to see Jimmy Garoppolo work with this guy, I want to see the 49ers draft Calvin Ridley with the number nine overall pick. Now, with the 10th overall pick, I believe the Raiders, and what I want to do, I want the Raiders to draft Denzel Ward. The Raiders, <laughs> Denzel Ward is an outstanding defensive back, a corner from Ohio State. And the Raiders secondary was absolute garbage last year. If you don't know, that's a football sports jargon term. Secondary is the group of safeties and corners. It's, it's all lumped together. The Raiders pass defense was absolutely awful last year. They were terrible. They were horrendous. And I believe Denzel Ward could be the beginning of fixing the problem with the Raiders' pass defense. They, he makes them better right away. He can step on the field and start day one. I like Denzel Ward with the Raiders. So that, that's my first mock draft. I do have a second mock draft I want to do, but I'm going to do that later in this episode. I don't want to... I think two back-to-back, -back, that's a lot. That's a lot of mock draft back-to-back-to-back. To back to back. So I'm going, to, I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to let it breathe, get, give it some air. And in the meantime, I want to talk about Case Keenum. The Broncos signed Case Keenum to a two-year deal worth $36 million. The big question to me is, are the Broncos committed to Case Keenum? Fair question. I, I think they are. I think they have to be. I think the Broncos must be committed to Case Keenum. See, the Broncos just want stability at quarterback. When is the last time the Broncos had stability at quarterback? It was Peyton Manning. They won a Super Bowl. They, they've had Trevor Simeon since. The Broncos are just looking for some kind of semblance and some kind of quarterback who can provide consistent play week in and week out. I'll be very honest. If the Broncos had a chance, I think the Broncos would draft Sam Darnold or Josh Allen or Josh Rosen. But I do believe if Baker Mayfield becomes available... The Broncos would pass on Baker Mayfield and take Bradley Chubb or Saquon Barkley. I think Baker Mayfield and Case Keenum are too similar. They're too similar quarterbacks. I, and I do not believe, there's, there's no way I could possibly, be, possibly believe that John Elway, I do not believe John Elway likes Baker Mayfield's personality. He's not for everybody. And I get the sense, if, if I was a betting man, I would bet that John Elway is not a fan of Baker Mayfield's personality. Here's the thing. Case Keenum is a small, small quarterback in Denver. Not the ideal fit. Why would they want two of them? Why would you want Baker Mayfield and Case Keenum? Two small quarterbacks with, they have good enough arms, but not amazingly strong arms. Why would you want two guys like that in Denver? You wouldn't. I think it's very possible that the Broncos are committed to Case Keenum. So, Case Keenum can win you games. Case Keenum is a, a good quarterback. But I do not believe that Case Keenum can win a Super Bowl in Denver. Maybe. Maybe we see, we saw, I remember that the Ravens with a great defense, they kept their scoring really low. They were able to take a quarterback like Trent Dilfer to the Super Bowl. I think that Trent Dilfer is worse than Case Keenum. I think Case Keenum is a better quarterback than Trent Dilfer was, but they are similar. Trent Dilfer was a, a game manager. He's not going to make that big grand mistake. He's not going to rip a 95-yard touchdown. I think Case Keenum is similar where you're just counting on Case Keenum to not blow it. Do not throw a costly interception. Don't have a costly turnover. Keep the game within range, and the Broncos defense can bail you out. 
But here's a, I, I just I believe that Case Keenum is a third tier quarterback. There's there's four tiers of quarterbacks. The top tier is quarterbacks who can win you a Super Bowl no matter what you put around them. That's Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Ben Roethlisberger, and even Tom Brady. Now, the second tier of quarterbacks are guys that if you give them a great roster, if you give them a good enough team, they can win you a Super Bowl. Matt Ryan, Derek Carr, Kirk Cousins. The problem is that Case Keenum was on one of those teams. He was on that roster last year. Case Keenum couldn't win a Super Bowl last year with the Minnesota Vikings. He went to a roster that's not as good. The Broncos roster is not as good as the Vikings roster. We could see Case Keenum maybe get to a Super Bowl. But I'd, I'm not confident that Case Keenum can beat the Rams or the Eagles or, again, his old team, the Vikings. Is it possible Case Keenum could win a Super Bowl? Yeah, I, I'm open to change. I'm rooting for Case Keenum. Don't get me wrong. I like Case Keenum. But I do not believe Case Keenum can win a Super Bowl with the Broncos. He could get there. The AFC is easier than the NFC, but I don't think ultimately that Case Keenum could win a Super Bowl with the Broncos. However, that's a great problem to have. If we're, we're, if we're worried about, can you win a Super Bowl, it's, that's a good problem. That's like saying, uh, I don't know, can he be a millionaire or can he be a billionaire? Well, he can only be a millionaire. That's not bad. Case Keenum's going to win a lot of games with the Broncos, I do believe. So he may not win a Super Bowl. I don't know that he's that talented. We could see a trend offer, but I just don't buy it. I do not believe Case Keenum can win a Super Bowl in Denver. And before I take a break, I'm going to take a break in just a minute. I have to cough so badly. In just a minute, I want to discuss the San Francisco 49ers. The San Francisco 49ers have two respectable corners on their roster. They have Akilo Witherspoon. He's entering the second year of his NFL career. He played really well last year. They also have Richard Sherman. I don't need, I shouldn't have to introduce Richard Sherman. You, at this point, you know who Richard Sherman is. Now, at the NFL owners meeting, the 49ers head coach, Kyle Shanahan, talked about Richard Sherman. Kyle Shanahan praised Richard Sherman. Kyle, Han Kyle Shanahan also called him a coach on the field. I like that. I like that description a lot. But hearing Kyle Shanahan describe Richard Sherman as a coach on the field made me wonder, I think it's worth considering, would the 49ers draft Denzel Ward, the corner out of Ohio State, if they had the chance? Would they do it? Because we, we've seen Richard Sherman is, here's my thinking, Richard Sherman is 30 years old. He's coming off an Achilles injury, which is not good. When you're 30 years old already and you just injured your Achilles at a position that's a ton of fast switch movement, that's a lot of running, it's a lot of speed and quickness, it's concerning that and it's possible maybe Richard Sherman will never again be what he once was. Begs the question, should the 49ers draft Denzel Ward? They could use Richard Sherman as a coach. Richard Sherman, he can be the nickel corner, let's be honest. In the NFL anymore, you need to have three different corners. There are so many multiple wide receiver sets, you can't have just two corners. You need to have three. There's often three, wide, three corners on the field at a time. That's called a nickel package. So Denzel Ward, Denzel Ward is worth considering. He's the best corner in the draft. The problem is that Denzel Ward is only 5 foot 11. And he's a corner that fits into a different system a lot better than the 49ers system. So the 49ers run a cover three defense, which requires longer, bigger corners. Guys like Akilah Witherspoon, who's six foot three. Richard Sherman's a bigger corner. I think the best fit for the San Francisco 49ers at corner in this draft. Here's who, if I'm the 49ers, I would draft. Quinton Meeks in the second or the third round. He is a corner out of Stanford. He's six foot two. I watched him play live at Washington State. He's a good player. He can really play. And here's the benefit with Richard Sherman. He could learn under Richard Sherman. We, they don't need him to play right away. The 49ers would not need Quinton Meeks to play right away. He could sit for two, three years. He could learn under a mentor. 
Richard Sherman, who ironically went to the same college as Meeks. I like that. There's no pressure on Meeks to play right away. That's who I would draft because the 49ers should invest in another corner for the future. With the first round pick, I believe if you have a top round draft pick, if you have a top 10 draft pick, you got to leave the draft with a guy who can play right away, unless you're drafting a quarterback. That's the one unique time you don't. But if you're drafting a running back, a linebacker, a corner, a receiver, it's got to be a guy who can you who you can insert into your lineup day one and make an impact. So I believe the 49ers should draft Tremaine Edmonds. And it's neck and neck. Tremaine Edmonds and Roquan Smith are both really, really great linebackers. It's really neck and neck between the two of them. I don't care. I like them both. Here's what I would go with, though. I would pick Tremaine Edmonds. He's six foot five. That's it. That's my only thing. Six foot, six foot five versus six foot one. I try to go with the bigger athlete. I like that a lot more. I feel safer with a bigger, stronger guy. So I, I think Tremaine Edmonds is the guy I would draft with the number nine overall pick if I was the San Francisco 49ers and John Lynch. I like Tremaine Edmonds. I believe he can start day one. You can insert him in your lineup immediately, and he can play for the 49ers. My name is Zach Schaumler. I'm going to take a short break. When I return, we're going to do mock draft number two. It's a lot more realistic. I, I, I had the Patriots moving up, and I had... A team passing on Saquon Barkley. That's not going to happen in this one. You're going to see, I think, a lot more realistic picks in my next mock draft after the break. We're going to talk about Shuhei Otani. We're going to talk about the Oklahoma City Thunder. What are the expectations for the Thunder in the playoffs? And then we're going to talk about Johnny Manziel and his spring league performance. Is Johnny Manziel actually an NFL quarterback? My name is Zach Schaumler. You can subscribe to Strong Opinion Sports on iTunes, on SoundCloud, and on YouTube. You can find the full entire hour-long podcast on YouTube, as well as my best, most interesting clips. Tell your friends about Strong Opinion Sports. If you like this podcast as much as I do, help me grow this podcast by telling your friends about it on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, whatever it is. Help me grow by telling your friends about this show. Bam! My name is Zach Schaumler. I will be right back. It's funny. I noticed a nervous tick I have while I was on a date the other day. When I get nervous, I have a, a tick where I say, you know, the thing is, I say that like over and over and over again. I believe that looking at the camera caused me, I think in that first segment, I was just nervous. It's weird. It's like making uncomfortable eye contact for a really, really long time where I just stare deep into your soul and I give you everything I have. And it makes me kind of uncomfortable. Does it make you uncomfortable? I'm uncomfortable right now. I'm more comfortable than I was in the first segment, but I am somewhat uncomfortable just staring into your soul right now. <laughs> okay, uh, I despise mock drafts. I absolutely hate mock drafts, but I did one anyways for you guys. You guys asked for it. I wanted to deliver. I wanted to give the good people what they want. It was a mock draft I did earlier with what I hope happens. These are the things I wanted to happen, the storylines I desired. It was interesting. It was fun. I liked it. I hope you did too. However, I can't imagine very much of that actually happening. I don't believe the Buccaneers would pass on Saquon Barkley. I don't believe the Patriots are actually going to trade up for Sam Darnold, although I would absolutely love that. I don't think that's going to happen. And here's the thing. If the Browns trade away either of their first picks. If they trade away the first pick, if they trade away the fourth pick, I'm going to be bummed. I, I, I don't, not even bummed. I would just be shocked. I'd be surprised. I think that would be a very stupid thing for the Browns to do. I believe giving up a top pick, giving the Patriots Sam Darnold would be a huge, huge mistake for the Cleveland Browns. Remember, the Cleveland Browns could have drafted Carson Wentz and they traded away from that position. So I never want to see the Browns make a mistake like that again. Here is mock draft number two. Mock draft number two is a little bit more realistic. It's a lot better for the Browns, I believe. So with my number one overall pick, I have the Cleveland Browns drafting Sam Darnold. It makes people angry. I understand everybody hates Sam Darnold. Look, I've done a lot of research. Sam Darnold is the best quarterback in this draft. I believe that. I think you cannot pass on a franchise quarterback. But even if it's Josh Rosen or Josh Allen, Sam Darnold... Whoever it is, the Browns had better walk away from the number one overall pick 
with a quarterback. If they don't get a quarterback, that's a huge, massive mistake. The Browns have not drafted a quarterback number one overall. In fact, I don't think they've drafted a quarterback in the top 10 since they draft, I could be wrong on that. I don't actually know, but I believe they haven't done that since they drafted Kim Couch with the number one overall pick when they were an expansion team. That's sad. The Browns must walk away with a quarterback after the number one overall pick. With the Zefkin overall pick, I believe with the number two overall pick, the Giants are going to draft Josh Rose. And I know a report went out today that all oh, the Giants are. They're not. They're concerned if the if the Browns draft Sam Darnold, the Browns are not going to draft Josh Rosen. The the sorry, the Giants don't like Josh Rosen. I don't buy it at all. I am not buying that the Giants do not like Josh Rosen. I just do not believe that report. I know it was reported. I know people are saying, oh, the Giants don't like Josh Rosen. They only want Sam Darnold. My belief is the Giants are putting that out there so that the Browns draft Sam Darnold and not Josh Rosen. I think the Giants actually want Josh Rosen. They're trying to manipulate the whole system so they get Josh Rosen and the Browns do not take him. The, there is no way. I, I cannot imagine a scenario where the Giants do not draft a quarterback number two overall, especially if Sam Darnold or Josh Rosen falls into their lap. Eli Manning's 37 years old, and he won three games last year. It is time. The time it is time for the Giants to move on from Eli Manning. I have the Giants picking a quarterback with the number two overall pick. Now, with the third overall pick, the Jets. What are the Jets going to do? Because in my scenario, you have Josh Allen available, and you have Baker Mayfield available. I believe the Jets are going to choose Baker Mayfield. They... First of all, the Jets did not move up to the third overall pick to draft anybody but a quarterback. They're there. They're going to get a quarterback. And long term, I, Josh Allen could be better for the Jets. Josh Allen has a bigger arm. He's stronger. He seems he's a little quieter in, in a more mature way. He's not loud and boisterous. But I believe the Jets are impatient. They want a guy who can start day one. Baker Mayfield's ready to play now. Josh Allen needs more time. He needs time to sit on the bench and learn. I think we're going to see the Jets go out and pick Baker Mayfield with a third overall pick. Now, with the fourth overall pick, I believe the Browns will draft Bradley Chubb. This may not happen. They could draft Saquon Barkley, but it, it, maybe it's wishful thinking. I want the Browns to draft Bradley Chubb with the fourth overall pick. Everybody's saying the Browns, oh, the Browns are okay at defensive end. They don't, they don't need a defensive end. That's idiotic you always if you have an opportunity to not have just one but two elite defensive ends on your roster you take it in a heartbeat imagine if the browns walk away from this nfl draft with a franchise quarterback and now would have two elite pass rushers on their team to have bradley chubb on one side miles garrett on the other that is un. Believable. I would feel terrible for Ren Roethlisberger, Andy Dalton, Joe Flacco. Any quarterback that plays in the AFC North will be running for his life because the Browns will now suddenly have the scariest pass rush in the entire NFL. I truly believe that. I hope and I believe the Browns would pick Bradley Chubb. I could be wrong, but that's, oh, that's what I want to happen. Maybe, maybe that pick could be wishful thinking, but that is what I want to happen. With the fifth overall pick, I believe the Broncos select Josh Allen. Josh Allen went to Wyoming. He's a local guy in the Colorado area. I know Wyoming and Colorado are not the same, but they share a lot of the same fans. Many, many Bronco fans look at Josh Allen and they see a hero because he's the hero of their state in Wyoming. And the Broncos have a structure in place that would allow Josh Allen to succeed. They have Case Keenum already there. There's no pressure. There's no rush. Josh Allen can sit. He can wait. He can learn. And Josh Allen could be successful in a couple of years when he would take the field in Denver. Here's why I really like Josh Allen in Denver. It gets cold up there. It's, it's blisteringly cold. Josh Allen has an arm built for the weather in Denver. That cold, snowy weather, Josh Allen is made to succeed in a place like Denver. Again, the key to the Broncos is that they do not need Josh Allen to play right away. They can afford to let Josh Allen sit on the bench and learn 
how to play quarterback from a guy like Case Keenum. With the sixth overall pick, the Colts are going to shock everybody. Everybody's saying, if Saquon Barkley's available, there's no way the Colts would pass on him. I think if Bradley Chubb's available, the Colts would draft Bradley Chubb. But if it came down to Quinton Nelson or Saquon Barkley, I believe and I hope that the Indianapolis Colts would draft Quinton Nelson, the guard from Notre Dame. What is the biggest problem with the Colts? Their offensive line is awful. They are terrible. They possibly ruined Andrew Luck's career, who's still not throwing a football. The Colts, please, dear God, I believe they do, and I hope they do, draft Quinton Nelson, bring some kind of help. Help Andrew Luck at the offensive line position. You don't need a running back. You can get a running back later in the draft. I believe that the Colts would draft Quinton Nelson rather than Saquon Barkley simply because they hopefully have learned their lesson. You cannot put Andrew Luck out there without some dudes on the offensive line that know what they are doing. You can find a running back later in the draft. There's, there's, it's a running back rich draft. The Colts will be fine if they don't draft Saquon Barkley. And with the seventh overall pick, this is where I believe the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would pull the trigger. They, they can't sit on Saquon Barkley. Whether they need Saquon Barkley or not, the realistic thing to believe is that if the Buccaneers had a chance to draft Saquon Barkley, they would pull the trigger and take that in a heartbeat. 100%. Doesn't matter. Jameis Winston's going to have a new weapon. They could not pass up Saquon Barkley with the seventh overall pick. With the eighth overall pick, I believe the Bears would draft Calvin Ridley. The Bears hired the Chiefs offensive coordinator, Matt Nagy, to be their head coach. They brought in the former Ducks head coach, Mark Helfrich, to be their offensive coordinator. The Bears are doing everything they can to allow Mitch Trubisky to succeed. That is what they are doing. They want to give Mitch Trubisky the opportunity to do well in the NFL. That is why I believe the Bears would go out and draft Calvin Ridley, the wide receiver from Alabama. They want to give... Mitch Trubisky, a receiver who will last and be a good guy for a long, long time. That is why I believe the Bears, if given the opportunity, if Saquon Barkley's gone, the Bears would draft Calvin Ridley, wide receiver from Alabama. Again, if Quentin Nelson's gone and Saquon Barkley's gone, the Browns are going to, sorry, the Bears are going to draft offense. The Bears are going to pick a guy who they can use to support their young quarterback, Mitch Trubisky. <clears throat> The 49ers with the ninth overall pick, I believe they're going to pick Tremaine Edmonds. I've said this before, I'll say it again. If you have a top 10 pick and you're not picking a quarterback, you must pick a guy you can insert into your roster and play right away. I believe Tremaine Edmonds is that guy for the 49ers. I like him over Roquan Smith, although it's really kind of a toss-up. Either one, Roquan Smith or... Or Tremaine Edmonds is a guy the 49ers can and should draft because they want a guy they can insert into their lineup right away. I like Tremaine Edmonds because he's a bigger athlete. So that leaves us with the Raiders. The Raiders are interesting because in this mock draft right now, Denzel Ward is available and Minka Fitzpatrick is available. I believe that the Raiders would go with Denzel Ward. I honestly don't know. It's really a toss-up. If both of them are available, they're going to take either one. The thing is, the Raiders must make their pass defense better. Either Denzel Ward or Minka Fitzpatrick would do that. Minka Fitzpatrick can play all over the field wherever you want. That is what I think will happen. Either Denzel Ward or Minka Fitzpatrick is who the Raiders will walk away with. And that concludes my more realistic version of the NFL mock draft. That's what I believe will happen. Who knows? It's all for fun. I, I'm going to be dead wrong. We're going to see on draft day some crazy stuff's going to happen. The Cowboys are going to trade up 100 picks and go get Sam Darnold. I don't know. But it's interesting. I, I, hopefully that at least made you think. All right, I want to shift your attention to baseball very briefly. Let me just tell you what, let me just tell you what Shuhei Otani has done in the last, sorry, in the first 11 games of the Angels season. Shuhei Otani has two wins as a pitcher, and one of them he threw a perfect game until the seventh inning, and he had 12 strikeouts. And while he was pitching, while Shuhei Otani was pitching, he has two wins as a pitcher. In that same 11-game span, Shuhei Otani currently has 
three home runs. Like, he hit three home runs. He didn't give up three home runs. Shuhei Otani hit three home runs out of the park. That That is absolutely ridiculous. I've compared Shuhei Otani to a former co-worker of mine. My former co-worker always had these exaggerated stories. I met Mike Tyson. I dunked a basketball. I hung out with this really hot girl. And it got to the point where I just, I didn't buy him. Unless I got some actual evidence, unless I saw it from my own eyes, I wasn't going to believe his stories. Well, uh, I said I'll, I'll believe it when I see it from Shuhei Otani. I think we're starting to see it. I'm starting to buy into Shuhei Otani. My goodness. I don't want to rush. I remember that back in the day, Armando Galarraga threw a, a perfect game till the last out and he lost it. He got robbed, by the way. But I never heard from Ar- Armando Galarraga ever again. The point is... We're only 11 games in. I want to see if this lasts. If Shuei Otani keeps pitching the level he's at, if Shuei Otani keeps hitting home runs, I will buy in. He's already on his way to being a superstar. I, I'm already, he has my attention. I'm watching his every at bat. I'm very, very intrigued and interested in Shuei Otani. And, and I think, man, if, if he can keep it up, if Shuei Otani keeps batting the same way he is, hitting home runs, Every couple games, if he keeps winning, starts pitching, could he be mentioned for MVP? Because what do you do with a guy like that? I mean, that's a definition of valuable. You you pitch every couple days, and when you're not pitching, you're also batting, and you're contributing batting as well. I don't know what to do with that. That's crazy. Talk about valuable. The guy is useful, and he can do everything. There's not a lot of pitcher. Usually when, like when Clayton Kershaw, he throws a bunch for the Dodgers. The next five days, he doesn't do anything. He's useless. It's pretty cool. It's pretty special what Shuhei Otani's doing right now for the Angels. He has my attention. I enjoy it. Regardless of what happens to Shuhei Otani, I enjoy him. He makes baseball much more interesting to me. Okay. I'm going to drink some water. Man. Am I talking fast? I don't know. I really, I can't tell. I, I have no idea. We have known... We have known that Johnny Manziel needs to answer a lot of questions about his commitment off of the field. The question is, can Johnny Manziel be a grown-up? However, everyone is also wondering, can Johnny Manziel actually play football? Kind of a big, important question, if you ask me. Well, this weekend, Johnny Manziel played in an NFL Development League spring game. It's a Development League for guys who are kind of on the bubble. They're not quite NFL players, but they want to be. And after watching that game, we have some questions answered about Johnny Manziel. Now, the short answer is that Johnny Manziel, nah, he doesn't really look like an NFL quarterback. I'm not confident in Johnny Manziel's ability as an NFL quarterback. So here's what I saw. Actually, the first thing I should say, because I know people are going to use this when they come to his defense, Everybody who's a fan of Johnny Manziel, everybody who is a supporter of Johnny Manziel is going to come out and say, Johnny Manziel, the offensive line was awful. Yeah, I I agree 100%. Johnny Manziel's offensive line was atrocious in the spring game this weekend. And and all the Johnny Manziel apologists are going to continue to yell that at at all of us. They're going to say, the offensive line, the offensive line, the offensive line. Okay, great. The offensive line for Johnny Manziel was terrible. I'll give that to you. I admit that. Fine. But I'm watching Johnny Manziel and he does not have an NFL arm. That you just have to t- take my word. You can buy that or not. Another people excuse that people are making is, "Oh, it was windy this weekend. The game was really windy. There were 30 mile an hour winds." That's the stupidest excuse I've ever heard in my life. NFL games are windy. Have you not ever noticed that before? Go to the Meadowlands. It's, it's like a swirling tornado in there. Johnny Manziel showed us that he, eh, he's okay. He's fine. Johnny Manziel went 9 for 15. He had 83 yards passing and a touchdown. And honestly, he was worse than the stats show. The, sh- the stats don't even do him justice how bad he was. I mean, he, Johnny Manziel was inaccurate. He almost got a guy killed with a bad throw. Johnny Manziel's arm strength was awful. 
And his attempts to scramble were mostly failed. I'm not trying to hate on the guy. I'm just being honest. I don't say what you guys want me to say. I say what I believe. I think that's a short term that hurts me because people want to hear me say, Johnny Manziel is the greatest thing ever. And when I don't say that, people get angry. However, I think long term, it's right. Because over a while, you know I'm not BSing you. I'm saying what I actually believe. And then when I watch Johnny Manziel, it's not good. It's not good. It's not, it's not terrible. Like he could play in the CFL maybe, but it's not, it's not great. This is not college anymore. I mean, Johnny Manziel failed to run this weekend, and these are against guys who are in the NFL Development League. These are not NFL players. Imagine if he rolls to the right and Miles Garrett's chasing him or Bradley Chubb or Von Miller. I mean, he's not going to make it happen. He's not going to make it work. And you look at the way Johnny Manziel's running with the ball. He's got one hand on the ball. That's terrible. That's dangerous. Sam Darnold can't even do that, and Sam Darnold's twice his size. I mean... It, it's a problem. Sam Darnold, or sorry, Johnny Menzel fumbled. Johnny Menzel should have had two interceptions. It's not good. And, and there's a touchdown Johnny Menzel threw. He, he rolled out to the right and threw a touchdown. And, and if you're not watching the whole clip, it looks like Johnny Menzel scrambled and he made a touchdown happen. It, it was a designed quarterback rollout. He, he's not making plays when he just runs around on his own. In fact, when Johnny Menzel runs around, it doesn't work. Johnny Menzel did not look like an NFL quarterback. Again, if he can't run against development league players, ugh, that's, that's a problem. Because that's, that's Johnny Menzel's niche. Like the one thing Johnny Menzel's good at, he may not be precise. He might not have a great deep ball, but he can always run around and make plays. And against even the NFL development league guys, Johnny Menzel still was not able to make that happen. So supposedly the Raiders are interested. Supposedly... John Gruden and the Raiders are interested in Johnny Manziel. I like that. I think that would be a good fit. John Gruden could help Johnny Manziel, not just the football player, but also the person off the field. I think John Gruden would be a good influence for Johnny Manziel. Now, my hope, my hope is that Johnny Manziel goes to the Canadian Football League. I like Johnny Manziel's scrappy style. I like how he plays and I want to watch him play. I want to watch Johnny Manziel play football. I mean, it'll probably be, be it'll probably be, probably be, 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 I can't even talk. It would probably be on YouTube watching some kind of highlight reel. I don't know. I'm not going to sit down and watch a Canadian football league game, but I want to see him. I think it'd be a shame if Johnny Manziel was on the bench somewhere simply because he's good enough television that I want to see him. I want to see Johnny Manziel play. And I would like, preferably I want to see Johnny Manziel go to Canada and play in the CFL. I think that's where he's the best fit. I think that's where he could actually get playing time, and that's what I want from Johnny Manziel. I don't want to watch Johnny Manziel sit on the bench for the Raiders. I want to watch Johnny Manziel play actual NF, play actual professional football. Because he may not even make... If he gets an offer from the Raiders, he might not even make their roster, and that, that would stink. So I hope Johnny Manziel doesn't waste his time. I want to see him go to the Canadian Football League. Some more water. Man, my throat is killing me. I, I was so sick this weekend. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. I'm like dying. It hurts to talk. <clears throat> I get sick so much. I don't sleep very often. So that's probably why. Okay, so last night, the Oklahoma City Thunder played the Miami Heat. And for the Thunder, it was a must-win game to clinch a playoff spot. The Thunder did win. They were able to clinch a playoff spot. However, it, it was not always pretty for the Thunder. The Oklahoma City Thunder started down 23-5. to Hassan Whiteside looked great for the Heat, and the Heat played really well. They're well coached. They have great ball movement. But in the end, the Oklahoma City Thunder were able to pull it out. The stars on the Thunder rose to the top. Paul George had 27 points. Russell Westbrook had 23 points. Steven Adams was, eh, was fine. He had three rebounds and seven points. And Melo, despite only having 11 points, he hit some really big shots at the end of the game. I didn't even write that down. I knew that off the top of my head. The Thunder did clinch a playoff spot. That's awesome. And that made me think of this. I, I love Amazon Prime. It's my favorite thing. I, I, it's how I watch all my movies. I'm a big proponent. I watch a ton of movies on Amazon Prime. Why do I usually pick movies that I haven't seen? Because I think it's more interesting when I don't know the end of a story. When I don't know how a story is going to work out, I find that more interesting. I believe that 
the Oklahoma City Thunder are the most interesting team in the NBA playoffs by far. Because we expect big things from the Cavaliers. We expect the Rockets to dominate. We expect the Warriors to win. Even the 76ers, people are starting to expect that the Philadelphia 76ers are going to play in the Eastern Conference Finals. The Thunder are a wild card. We don't know what to expect from them. They have all these stars, all these, these aging stars, kind of veterans, all this talent. And you wonder, could the Oklahoma City Thunder, could they rise up? Could the Thunder make something out of nothing, something we haven't really seen before? Could the Thunder make it happen? Because we know this. We know that veterans pick their spots throughout the NBA season. We know that, you know, Paul George, Carmelo Anthony, they're not giving it their all the entire season. I don't know that Russell Westbrook ever takes a day off. He's kind of like a crazy energizer bunny. He's like Casey Neistat. I respect both of those men so much. But we know that Paul George isn't giving it 100% all the time. We know that Carmelo Anthony is not giving it 100% all the time. Now, in the playoffs, everybody is full speed ahead the entire time. All the aging stars, all the veterans, they turn it on. They're, they're not wasting any breath. They're not wasting any time. It just makes me wonder, what will we see from the Oklahoma City Thunder? This is a movie that I don't know the end to. I don't know if they could rise up and challenge the Rockets. Probably not, but they probably could challenge an injured, injured Warriors team. So I don't know. I'm really, really curious. What will we see from the Oklahoma City Thunder? Because I'm excited to find out. Could, will they turn it up? Will they suddenly turn up the crank up the knob and play even better? Because I, I would like that. I would love to see some more intensity from the Thunder and see them play really well. That sounds like fun to me. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is this. This is going to make people, whoo, it's going to make people angry. Baseball purists, you're coming after me. I know. Just go away. If you're, if you're, you're, you're not going to like this. You're not going to enjoy this. John Carlos Stanton, I saw a stat. John Carlos Stanton has had 16 strikeouts in just the last week alone. Mm, and, and I don't care. In fact, I like it. I like what John Carlos Stanton is doing. I want John Carlos Stanton to swing for the fences every single time he steps up to the plate for the Yankees. That is why I watch John Carlos Stanton. I don't watch John Carlos Stanton to watch him hit singles, to hit doubles, to get walks. I watch John Carlos Stanton to watch him hit home runs. He's my he's my maybe my second favorite player in baseball. That's probably Bryce Harper, Shuhei, then John Carlos Stanton. But man, the thing is, I want to see John Carlos Stanton try to hit a home run every single time. And baseball purists will get very angry at that. What about his on-base percentage? What about this? What about that? No, I don't care. I don't care if he strikes it every time. Because I want to see John Carlos Stanton hit 50 home runs. I want to see him try every single time. If you try for a home run every single time, enough at bats, John Carlos Stanton is going to hit 50 home runs. That's I think could happen. Do I love it? No. I don't like strikeouts. I don't like that John Carlos Stanton, I think, went 0 for 5 with 5 strike, went 0 for 7 with 5 strikeouts recently. That sucks. I don't want to see that. But that's a sacrifice I'm willing to take. John Carlos Stanton, I watch it. If I was paying, I would be paying to watch John Carlos Stanton hit home runs. I don't care if he strikes out. As long as he's trying to hit home run after home run after home run, eventually one of those suckers is going to connect. And that is what I want to see from John Carlos Stanton. John Carlos Sandin, keep swinging for the fences, my friend. I don't care that you strike out. That's your philosophy. Swing at the fences every time. You're going to strike out. It's going to happen. He's going to lead the entire MLB in strikeouts, and maybe he'll lead the entire league in home runs as well. My name is Zach Schaumler. That is all I have for today. I just call this show Trigger Warning. That's what this show is. It's just me sharing my opinions and making a lot of people angry. It wears on you. It does. You know, it's... As much as you try to not worry about it and you try to shrug it off, I, I'm not trying to be right. Like, that's not my goal at all. I try to be interesting. I try to say things that, yeah, it's funny. I mean, I think there are people out there that watch my show and they keep coming back even though they absolutely hate me. I should just laugh it off. It is kind of funny, but I don't know, man. I, uh, I, I just, I don't know. I, I love what I'm doing. I feel good about this show. I feel good about what I'm doing with this podcast. You guys seem to love it, so that's... It's really what should matter the most to me. All right. My name is Zach Schalmer. You can subscribe to Strong Opinion Sports 
on iTunes, on SoundCloud, on YouTube. You can find the full entire hour-long podcast on YouTube as well as my best, most interesting clips. If you like strong opinion sports as much as I do, help me grow this podcast by telling your friends about this show. Share it on Facebook, on Instagram. If you understand Reddit, help me out there. If you like strong opinion sports, help me grow by telling your friends about this show. My name is Zach Schaumler. Thank you so very much for listening and have a great day. But I'm bummed. Bam, we're done.